Anyway, do you want to do the intro this time? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, anyway, hello and welcome to another Android Studio podcast. For, uh, man, I need to do that again. I, I don't want to say Android Studio, but it's it's stuck in my oh. head. All right. So what is up, guys? Today I'm here with Even Spy each again, and we're going to make one of the best podcasts you've ever listened to. This is podcast number two, Ooh. and we've set the standard high because... Code Palace is moving forward. Uh, and I leave it to you, even. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't know I was on the best podcast out there. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm obviously honored. Yeah. Obviously an honored Great. guest to be Great. here. Um, yeah. No, you can uh, you can start shooting the questions. I guess <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm a little intimidated. You know, being on the best podcast is a lot of pressure oh, thank you for that intro <laughs> anyways so the first thing i really wanted to talk about is like two days ago i updated my bios from my computer i went on a camping trip for two days i did some climbing i came home and the first thing my computer welcomed me with was we're going to update your bios whether you like it or not and it was about i think four megabytes which isn't that much or, uh, maybe four gig no it was definitely four megabytes or four thousand megabytes I can't remember. It was yeah. a very small amount of data. Definitely not 4,000. Maybe. But it was updating, and it only took about three minutes. And I thought, OK, fair enough. Update. I can use my computer. It updates. It turns off. It doesn't turn on ever again. And it starts mm. giving me these beeping error sounds that I've been researching for the past yeah. two to three days. Did you get an no, error? No, because. The motherboard I'm researching has very little information on it on the web. Oh. And it's provided by HP. It's called Erica 2. And I have no idea what's wrong with it. <laughs> OK. So the idea is now to research a bit more, maybe invest in a new motherboard and see if I can just destroy everything. Uh, but, <clears throat> but my friend yeah. said that it was possible actually to get an adapter for the hard, was it the hard drive or the SSD, I can't remember, but an adapter that allows me to get all the information and transfer it to my laptop. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, there's there's ways of doing that. It's you know been a classic issue for <laughs> decades. <laughs> <laughs> so the question yeah. I'm gonna uh, retrieve out of this little anecdote was, or is, what other advice would you give to people who recently got Windows computers or Windows uh, operating system? And essentially, what should we download and what should we not download? Oh. Because oh, this BIOS update really fucked up everything. And that's about 500 euros I spent for nothing. Well, I, OK, OK. I don't think you're No, it's, not, it's definitely not that. Like, definitely. I don't think flashing a BIOS doesn't kill any of your. I, I think you can recover your. Uh, but your the moral video. of the story was a four minute update. Is probably going to cost me hundreds of euros. No, I don't. I don't think so. I think you're going to find a way. No, I think I legit think you're going to find a way to reset. There's there has to be a way to reset the BIOS on the. Mobile. Okay. Like there has so? to be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is one. I've tried all of the reset oh. methods. Of course, I'm very curious to see what my uh, computer friend says when he looks at it. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want, I, I can also ask someone for. Oh, that would be very cool, and kind. Yeah. The thing no is, worries. like, I already, I already told you that uh, yeah. the operating system does not even start, right? Yeah, yeah. It's because yeah, the BIOS is screwed. So it doesn't do anything. But it, like, if you if you just send me the 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 the, the whole name of the the motherboard, yeah, you got you know, it. Um, and then I'll I'll ask. All right, but back to the um, question. What advice do you have yeah. for new Windows users that don't know how to manage no, it? I think, I think <laughs> who don't know how to manage it. I'm, I'm talking about myself well, mostly, but go on. Obviously, you know, take precaution in what you're doing. You know, read. It's free. <laughs> you know, there's so much information. Like, literally, there's so much information out there to just absorb about these. And they've been done. They've been done over and over again. And, you know, you can find nice websites explaining a lot of things about this. But anyway, uh, you asked about some drivers and things, and I think 
a lot of that thing, a lot, a lot of those things uh, rely on uh, the components that you mm. buy. Uh, yeah, like if you buy, you know, specific graphics cards, if you buy specific card drives, etc., you want the specific drivers because that's what drivers do, right? They're the, the, I guess, the parts of the software that uh, is the first to communicate to kind of integrate your hardware uh, nodes. Or whatever you want to call them. I, I want to stop using the word component <laughs> over and over again. But yeah, it, it integrates your hardware parts uh, into your system so everything can talk together. Um, yeah, so look it up. Look up your, your graphics cards. Look up your processors, all your things, and see which drivers you need. The yeah. thing is, Windows actually comes with a lot of... Um, a lot of their own drivers. And a lot of the drivers... Uh, by, I guess, Microsoft are actually decent, if not very good. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that you don't need to get. Um, but things like, you know, graphics card drivers, that's always going to be something issued by, you know, either NVIDIA oh, yeah, yeah, or yeah. AMD. Or Makes sense. You, you always want that one. Yeah. Wow. Now I completely forgot what I wanted to ask. But, oh, yes, on Windows... <laughs> 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 so in Windows, is it possible to disable um, what do you call it updates? Like, can you absolutely ignore them for as long as you want? Is there any way to do that? Oh, it's been a while since I played like with Windows and such. Do you have a detail. MacBook? Uh, no. <laughs> God. No. <laughs> so, do you use Win? Uh, I'm sorry, Windows, or do you use Linux, or what do you use? No, I, I use Windows. I use Windows. Just I have not, I've not. It's been a while since I played around. But you let Windows, it update you know. whenever it wants, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I think no. I like. I would recommend it, but I would recommend uh, not having it be whenever it wants to. Do. Well, you know, it depends. Like the best thing to do is if you have the time, you should read about what the of updates course. are. Sometimes the updates really are crucial. Like it's. It's not a secret that Microsoft, that Microsoft can fuck things up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, re, you know, release something with a bug, and then they have to hurry up and make a patch. And like, oh, please get this security update. It's important. We're like, sure, yeah, sure. 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 Um, and it is <laughs> like you, we we need that because you know they messed up or whatever. Then there's some crappy ones like you know the so-called. Well, I'm using the word crappy because they're not really relevant to me, but. Um, Creators updates, for example. I'm I don't I don't use the uh, creators features, and I'm pretty sure if you're a serious creator, you already use different applications for all your work. So I don't think you know Microsoft made a huge leap, and I don't think it was necessary to make these updates compulsory. Um, I couldn't avoid that, so, so still you know, I had to get. Yeah, um, but the thing is, uh, I do disable one thing. I got reminded yes. of, and that's <clears throat> there's this feature. I think they introduced it with. Actually, I, I think it came with Windows 10, but I don't remember. I I don't remember if it was 8.1 or 10. Um, it is no, I think it's 10. It's the peer to peer updating. So they have this thing where do you know how torrenting works? Yeah, like you have a computer kind of directly uh, communicating or sending information right. to another computer. It's it's not it's not so much a central server. Well, it is. It used to be. But then they said, okay, we can make it faster because, you know, we already distribute updates to everyone. If your grandmother gets your, your the updates before you and you're on the same network or whatever, then you can do peer-to-peer -peer and it's going to be way faster for your grandma's PC to transfer that crap right. to someone else. The problem is that while you're transferring potential gigabytes of updates from your grandma <laughs> your network traffic is screwed yeah. right so i i definitely the first thing i do is one of the first things i do in like the list that i have is um to disable uh that peer-to-peer -peer stuff i don't like it i don't think that should be used <laughs> i don't like it's a fine feature for people who I, it's okay, like it has its positives, but I don't see the positives wait, out. Wait, 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 even though are we still talking about is this something in Windows? This is in Windows. If you go to Windows update settings, I, I'm pretty sure I can find but it. But the thing is, I, I, mean, I have a MacBook now, yeah, because I have to wait for my Windows. Yeah, to work. I, I, 
I realized <laughs> actually. Uh, but I can actually try to find it just a second. Uh, if we go to advanced options, yes, there is receive updates. No, no. Pausing delivery optimization. Delivery optimization. If you have, okay, okay, here it is. It's under delivery optimization and it's no longer called peer to peer, but that's what it is. It's if it says allow downloads from other PCs. So it says if you have an unreliable internet connection or are updating multiple devices, oh there you go. Allowing downloads from other PCs can help speed up the process. So that's that's an advantage. Sure. But here's what happens. If you turn this on, it says your PC may send parts of previously downloaded Windows updates and apps to PCs on your local network or on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Literally, it says that, and that's the first thing that I turn off because there's no point. <laughs> like for me, at least, there's the one advantage that made a very good point. It says if you're updating multiple devices right. on your network, I imagine that like admins somewhere are using this. Like it's fine, it's fine for where it applies, but I think people need to be aware that this is a thing, and your computer will do this, mm. right? So if you're if you're on like a crappy network and you're trying to kind of squeeze out every last you know kill a bit of <laughs> broadband um you need to be aware of these things yeah damn oh it's so difficult with windows these days the thing is you know my macbook is from 2012 and yeah. it has not required me to update since then and that is wonderful the problem is now that i want to develop also for iphones using xcode and whatever Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, no. it doesn't yeah. let me use that software because yeah. it's, it is not updated. Yes, I know this. I know this from work. So the way it worked for me, this is actually kind of funny. So we use yeah, Xamarin, yeah, of course. right? I told you about this. But here's the thing, right? If you want to work on the newest Xamarin for both Android right. and iPhone, what happens is for me at work, you have to, well, we use Windows machines for development yeah. minimally. And we test on Androids because they'll let you connect directly. Yep. But for iPhones, you need to work from a from from a right. MacBook. So the thing is, or an iMac, whatever, a Mac. <laughs> okay. machine. So the problem is the problem is that um, we had to have a computer on the side just running Mac OS, or it was actually a MacBook later on. We got a, a genuine MacBook. The issue was that when we wanted to update Xamarin for whatever reason, a feature or a security sure. update. Because this, this was an app that was in yeah. production. So obviously, yeah. you kind of wanted to make sure that things were properly working at all times. The issue was that for Android, we could just click, you know, update, and it would get the latest um, Xamarin package from the, basically, via Visual mm. Studio. While for, for the iPhone to work, we had to get that but we had to go into visual studio on the macbook get the get the xamarin updated on the macbook but then it would tell you that it needs the new x code for the new xamarin so you go update the new x code and then it does as you say it needs the newest operating system so now there's like 15 things just chained updating before <laughs> we can send out the new version out to the customer like that's ridiculous <laughs> Why do I need to update the operating system for the fuck that? No, that I don't sense. understand it either. No. But yeah, these giants. That's one of the beauties. That, that's one of the beauties working with um with Apple. I'm sorry, like I'm I'm definitely biased here, but I've had mostly bad experiences with working with Apple products. I have. And I'm very curious right. to hear why aren't you a Linux user? So I actually played around with Linux um, when I was younger because, like, obviously, it's it's a curious thing, you know. If you're if you're ever into IT and if you're ever into playing around with computers, you're probably going to run into some version or other, or sorry, some distro or other of Linux that you want to look into. I played around with what I did was I bought a Raspberry yeah, Pi. Do you have one? Do you actually have one? I have the very first model, the Model A, with like the shittiest hardware performance. You packs. have to bring it over <laughs> next time you come over. 
And I'll sure. give you back your Java yeah. Android book as a return. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I installed a, a Linux distro for that. I think it was called uh, Pi Linux. Sure. Uh, don't, don't quote me on that. It's like, it's literally been years. On that. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's recorded. <laughs> so what do I think? <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it has been years and I, I basically just used it to play around with the terminal commands in Linux. So I'm very much into, I'm a guy who loves using the command line for whatever he's doing on windows. And I'm very comfortable with the, the batch language. Mm. Um, but I wanted to learn a little bit of that, uh, bash that they use in Linux or at least. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I played around with that on Pi and, you know, I was doing all sorts of weird things like uh, administering users and installing programs and getting different permissions to work. And then I was playing around with the hardware on the Pi. Um, and the thing is that it, it was interesting because um, you get to learn a little bit about like the, the layers of Linux, like how each distro, the distribution. Mm -hmm. Uh, has its own like layer over the kind of the core components of Linux, which is what one of the things that makes Linux really nice, you know, because people make Linux, right? right? It's it's not a a company, even though it is strictly, especially the core components are strictly monitored. <laughs> I've heard some nasty stories about uh, Linus uh, Torvalds, I think he's called the, the uh, creator of Linux. What did he do? He just monitors uh, people. He can be, or at least he used to be, very, very nasty when it came to accepting uh, um, improvements or criticism, you know, towards his the core components, like the uh, core, you know, changes. Yeah. Um, especially if someone, you know, wouldn't be like tip top notch, you know, amazing developer, amazing code, he'd really give him shit. That's what I heard. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if he's if he's still like this or whatever. Um, he, yeah, but but yeah, that's the thing. Like it was it was cool for me to learn about Linux. Um, I also played uh, around a tiny bit with Ubuntu back when Ubuntu was kind of, I guess, exploding in popularity. Ubuntu is also another operating system, right? Yeah, so it's based on Linux, and it's a, it's a distribution is probably the most popular distribution. It's probably the most I really don't want to use the term Windows like, but I I'm going to use that term not in the sense that it's like Windows. It's more in the sense that it's very very friendly to use. You don't have to be you know when people think Linux, it's like ah oh, no, I have to know weird commands and things don't work and stuff like that. I'll, the thing with Ubuntu is that a lot of the things are out of the box. Okay, actually, in that sense, is probably even more like Mac. Right. So I, I again, I don't mean that it looks like it or that it acts like it. It's just, well, it, it's it's in the sense that if you install Ubuntu, things work, and it's very easy to install. But uh, one more, one more thing, like, I have never used Linux. Is it mm -hmm. really not worth spending more time getting invested in Linux? Like, why aren't you using Linux still today? Um, for me personally, it's because, it, for at least for what I need. Mm. the applications that i mm. use like both for work and i guess at home they aren't they aren't supported <laughs> like the fact of the matter is that microsoft won like microsoft won the fucking monopoly yeah. basically like if you want like fuck it like you can take an example like yourself right you have a macbook but the thing is if you want to for example play some games or anything like you need a windows i'm so game. sad <laughs> And that's like the first thing, yeah. right? Like you, you gotta get one. If you wanna, I don't know. There's there's other there's other um, Windows specific things that you need it for. I know that. Um, yeah, for development especially, we use a lot of Windows machines at work, and the problem is that it's it can be a little difficult. Well, actually, for some things we use Linux, but the thing is, for the things that we, you know, rely on. Um, yeah. I guess inbuilt functions to do things for us. 
they're all made by Microsoft. They're all Windows libraries, and like it's it's hard to kind of migrate. But, I'm not saying it's possible, but it's just it's it's hard and it's annoying. Do you know Do you know if there are any reasons to use Linux? Um, yeah. So like the biggest one I've heard, or let's say the biggest one in the in the tech community, the geeks will right. kind of try and sell, is that um, it's highly optimized. Okay. It's like a highly optimized, usually a very lightweight system. So when you install Windows, you install like 20 gigabytes of software. But the problem is you a typical user will use a, you know a, a smidge of that. Like there's there's so much stuff that average people just won't touch ever yeah. in Windows. And so Linux users actually, and a lot of Windows users, will just refer to this as uh, bloatware because it bloats the system. It bloats, it bloats the disk. Okay. Um, and Linux is very much against that, or that's kind of like against the Linux code. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that's one of the biggest arguments. And can can we find Linux computers in our stores if we go to the supermarkets or something? And our supermarkets, but oh yeah, I think um, when I was ordering um, a Dell laptop not too yeah. long ago, um, some of them were actually like when you if you do it through the online store, at least back when I did it, um, they actually gave you the option of not getting Windows with it, instead getting some Linux distro. I can't remember what, but especially were. in Denmark, do you know any store that would sell a Linux computer like in a physical store? Oh, I haven't been in a physical computer store. In <laughs> do, but physical stores, they do sell Linux computers every now and then, right? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I I honestly don't know. I'd have to ask okay. my friend. I, I, the problem is that I genuinely don't know if it is popular enough for a physical store Precisely. to have it. Right? If you have a, an online store, you're always going to get like, three or four percent of your geeks buying your Linux machines. And it doesn't matter because they're just all shipped from yeah, your yeah. warehouse. It of doesn't course. matter. But like having them on site in a physical store, I don't know. But I, you know, you might be right. There might be more of them. Like I'm I'm pulling numbers out of my ass. Maybe it's not three percent, maybe it's thirty percent. Like what do I know? No, of course. I don't know why I asked you, but <laughs> <laughs> has there been any <laughs> don't, don't cough while I'm speaking. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I was gonna ask. Like, have you discovered anything new in code that really fascinated you, or really shocked you, or recently? Since the last time, yeah. We Is there any? Has there been any new in, uh, innovations in coding? Uh, in coding, that's such a, like a generic. In question. in your kind of coding, you know. Um. Besides watching my videos where you learn something mm -hmm. new every day, fine, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, subscribe. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that uh, audio clip uh, at the end of all my Great. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm following the, like, the .NET updates. They're, they're in the process of releasing a, I guess it's called .NET 5, um, the new .NET version, which is supposed to take all the good .NET components and kind of blend okay. them together. Um, so there's there's this idea that uh, what is now called uh, .NET Core that runs on all platforms, or when I say all platforms, I mean like Windows, Linux, Mac, right. whatever. It's kind of like Java. Um, .NET Core is, well, it, it lives up to the name in the sense that it's a very core aspect of .NET. So you have a lot of Features, for example, on the on the desktop uh, version of .NET, you have a lot of features in Xamarin, especially in WPF. You know, things that aren't a part of .NET Core that are kind of extra on the side. There's this idea that they want to kind of blend everything together and, and make it available for everyone. Um, so yeah, that's coming out soon. I don't. I think it's supposed to be this year or next year. I don't remember. I think it's this year. And regarding your own studies, is there anything new you learned that really, really made an impact on your work? Like yeah, encoding. Coding. Still encoding. Um, like, did, did anything affect the way you code in the past six months? 
Uh, I'm sure some. Yeah, wait, just a second. I remember sending my friend. There was an update in C sharp. I'm trying to remember what it was about. <laughs> I remember sending this to my friend. I was like, wow, like this is like you know they're advancing the language every day. Yeah. But the thing is, like, once in a while, you get this update, and you're like, "Oh yeah, like this is this is cool. I'm, this is really cool." I just can't remember. For the Are they going to remove the semicolon anytime soon? Ah, uh, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me try and search it actually in the conversation. <laughs> actually, no, it was it was a really really neat thing, and I can't remember for the life of me. Uh Christ. Otherwise, in the meantime, you search for that. I also have a side yeah. uh, conversation to get into. And that is the new YouTube. Yeah. The other day, I went in to look at my music playlists on YouTube. I have Spotify Premium, but I still have some on uh, YouTube. And it was 11 out of 12 of them told me I need YouTube Premium to, to actually listen to them. Uh, and that yeah. is so stupid. Yeah. Have you experienced the same um, thing yet? Yes. So it's actually very recent. Um, yeah, I wanted to link a song that was previously free on at least the Danish YouTube. I'm pretty sure it's a local right. thing, right? Um, and it's it's gone. And then I realized that a lot of the artists or the, a lot of the channels have made these weird deals where they're either unavailable. Or they're put on uh, YouTube right. Premium. That's fucking annoying. It is so <laughs> awful. I mean, Spotify yeah. dominates in the field. There's no reason to use YouTube or SoundCloud. SoundCloud is also, although it is yeah. concentrated on music, so fair enough. But there is no reason to use these different kind of uh, sites when you have Spotify. I mean, Spotify already guarantees you get the majority of music. I'm really annoyed I can't find this, and I'm pretty sure it was a really cool feature that I'd really like to talk about. <laughs> That's why I, I set up the question for you. The least you could have done is come prepared. Do you have any idea of what it could have been? Man. <laughs> because, I'm but... I'm going on my... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on my freaking history in my browser. I'm still going to... How long is your history? It doesn't matter how long my history is. I'm going to search my history. Let's see if yeah. I, can I forgot I'm speaking to a programmer. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going. I'm not going to scroll through my. History. I, thought, I thought you would scroll, you know. And I Yay. thought, wow, that is so idiotic. That's going to take ages, unless you deleted it yesterday for obvious reasons. Uh, let's see. Nope, nope, nope. Mm. I'm definitely not going to mention that. <laughs> Well said, well said. <laughs> uh, wait, why do so many things come up when I write C Sharp? This is <laughs> You're a C Sharp developer. I, I imagine most I of the search queries you make yeah. regard the uh, characters C and Sharp. Absolutely not. I know everything there is to know. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> I think I found it. Wait, wait, wait. I actually think okay, I'm Okay, I'm excited. Okay. Not that, not that. <laughs> wait a minute. I, can't, I really can't no, wait really. to hear it. And I'm also a bit scared to hear it because I almost suspect it's not interesting at all. No, 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 it is. It is. <laughs> okay. I mean, interesting because, it's interesting because it prompts um, a lot of conversation. As soon as you find it, I'm going to cut this podcast and leave it for the next podcast. Cliff, <laughs> cliffhanger. <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, like we can, we can, uh, we can move on. I'll kind of just scroll around here. Can you multitask? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Uh, well, then, still on yeah. the programming language uh, topic, you have watched. Wait, I can't. I can't focus. <laughs> <laughs> I expected right, go on, it. Go on. But you've watched sure. a few of my Kotlin videos, I imagine. Maybe like a couple. I don't know. Maybe even one. Maybe one, at least one. Is one, one or less. So, no, no, no. One or more is, is perfectly logically. Correct. Have you seen anything in Kotlin that you've enjoyed and you in C sharp? 
I asked you that last time, and you said no. Well, you you you, uh, you cut out a little bit. If have I enjoyed ever, anything in Kotlin? I, I, that, well, uh, I asked. Uh, is there anything you saw in Kotlin that you? Fucking <laughs> 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 yeah. Is that a no? <laughs> All right. No. Nah. <laughs> Ryan, give it to me. What was it? <laughs> anything I saw in Kotlin that <laughs> that you wish you had in C Sharp. <laughs> That I wish I hadn't C yeah. sharp. Uh, I don't wish, but like you would think it's more convenient that you had it in C sharp. Mm. Still oh. a no. <laughs> so, probably not. Like no, nothing that's you know like impressed me. That saved you enough yeah. time to care, right? Yeah, not really. I, did I know? Did you, did you notice <laughs> I mentioned your name in one? Uh, it was the one about the inheritance. I believe it's I about inheritance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how does that how does, yeah. how does that make you feel? It's fine. <laughs> no one knows who I am. Are you, but you're you're the you're the oh, only yeah. podcaster yeah. I've been speaking to on this channel. Oh, this is actually so true. So if this they don't true. know you by now, it's a bit weird. Oh wait, wait. No 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 no. This is this uh, ah. Oh uh, oh yeah 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 yeah. This is definitely the site. Because these features are different. Like holy shit, that other site was garbage. <laughs> That other side was like, oh, look at these. <laughs> no. so, I'm waiting. I'm so curious. And so are the, so are the uh, listeners. You're going to do a lot of editing here because I'm going to like eventually get to the... I probably will cut out, I think, the 10 minutes of you searching. But that wasn't it. Um, yeah, I was just reading about something something about native integers, which is really cool because like, if you use an n int, it'll take a look at your platform. And if you're running on the 32-bit system, the integer will take four bytes. But if you're running a 64-bit system, it'll take eight bytes. Oh wow! So that's really cool. But that's not the one I wanted. But that, that also brings <laughs> up a uh, subject I want to bring. Uh, I think I already asked you. In Kotlin, nope. it has you know it has typecasting, automatic or typecasting, right? Which means okay, if you yeah. type a number 23, it will call it an int. If you put 20 billion, it will say mm, yeah. long. Whatever. But the thing is, I don't understand why it doesn't automatically cast it to a byte if I put 10, you know, or a short if I put 200. Is there any reason for the program not to care enough to cast it to the correct type, like a byte? Uh, you think there's a limitation when it comes to uh, smart typecasting? The problem is, I think it's actually a theoretical problem. I hope you give me more than than just that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I'm trying. I'm, you know, I really like the. I I don't want to go into the details because I don't think it'll be friendly, and I don't think it'll be interesting so, for a lot of people. To I cut it down in, to about thirty seconds. To cut it down very yeah thirty seconds. It is a theoretical problem in computer science that doesn't let you check whether a program will work correctly. Mm. This is related to theory. You can read about this. this is, it's a wonderful topic. Uh, look up the halting problem for anyone that's interested. But anyway, the reason being, uh, more specifically to that case, when you look at a program, when you say 10, yeah. the issue is that the compiler can't assume that the variable that's supposed to hold the number 10 will never be used to handle numbers that require values greater than those that a short can okay. support. So it means that there will be an unnecessary crash. No, there is a possibility of an unnecessary crash. The problem is that we cannot verify that because of a theoretical issue. Let me be more accurate. We can't verify it for all possible programs right. we may be able to verify it for your very program but not for all possible programs which is what the compiler is supposed to work for and that's why the compiler has to assume kind of a worst case scenario it's still friendly enough to say okay he's probably only going to use an integer for a very common case you know like we're not going to make every number right. a double or a float or a long or whatever but we're going to give them an integer. This is fine because integers are still huge. They support huge numbers. 
So, um, yeah, it's really it is because it's a theoretical problem. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, to avoid uh, errors in the long run. Yeah, so it is possible. Once again, if you really like, if you made your own compiler, which I have a strong feeling you might do in the <laughs> near future, because I feel like you are obsessed with languages. And I think it's wonderful because languages are also a a very theoretical topic if you ever get interested in I that, only I only studied I Kotlin even I don't know where you're getting this from <laughs> this is this is beyond this is beyond <laughs> specific implementation Go but on. anyway if you do ever get into that uh you could look into you know certain optimizations like that where you could or you know you could you could uh, you could play around with that you can do customizations and see how far you can get okay so just imagine yeah. the programming language brainfuck but with half oh, okay. half the characters. That's what I'm going to create. Oh, so we're going, what is it, eight characters? We're going from eight characters to Yeah, optimization, four. that's what it's called. I think someone made one with two, but I'm not sure. Isn't that just called, uh, what is it, binary code? Uh, no, you're right, <laughs> yes. But there's like a language, I think that uses I's and J's, if I remember correctly. Please ah. cite that. If you can find any language that uses just I's and J's. I would love to see it. You found it. What's it called? IJ. Yes, so there are two. <laughs> so there what's is... the language called? Oh, Hebrew. <laughs> well, don't ask me. They are they are letters. They're letters I and J in Greek and Hebrew, respectively. And the reason it's these letters is because these are the smallest letters in the two respective alphabets. And the thing is that these letters together are actually not. No, yeah, they're separate languages. So actually, it's it's one character, but it's a little more complicated because it's actually some. It's a type of calculus that can then be considered a programming okay. language. I don't want to get into uh... the theory, but yeah, it, it seems that I I misunderstood. It is. Oh, wait, wait, there is... IJ programming. Okay, there's someone made someone made an actual language from IOTA. IOTA, yeah. Yeah, some guy called Chris Barker that uses only two symbols. It uses the asterisk and I. And that is because he translates the calculus into these symbols. Okay, but this is fine. Okay. So there is one, and if you really, really want to really struggle in life, <laughs> this is this is for you. But I, I warn you again, you you do have to read up on the theory. I don't think people are going to understand. Well, you just much. gave me my next innovative idea, and that is a that is the Wait, programming language are, with only one letter. <laughs> yeah, far <laughs> be it for me to <laughs> suppress your thirst for knowledge. But just imagine, uh, just yeah. imagine this. So you use the letter X to start the statement, and instead of using the semicolon at the end, you just use the X. So you got X, X. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it does what? It starts and closes the program. Mm. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and yeah, <laughs> the end. Oh, yeah. but here's the benefits: you don't have to worry about compilation errors, and you don't have to worry about forgetting the syntax or if-else statements or yeah. any new, you know, functionality that the code has to offer. It is all already <laughs> there. It is made to do what you want it to do, and that is compile. Yeah. So um, uh, this reminded me of an in another interesting language that I actually never tried, but I have read about, and this is also years ago. It's called white space. I'm going to type that in as well. Yeah. So make sure you type in white space programming language. That is the second search result, because I think it heard it from you. So it's just <laughs> okay. white spaces from what I see. And yes. <laughs> so the thing so is <laughs> that... You don't use proper characters. You use well the characters that you use are just values that make spaces on you know text. So there's spaces, tabs, line feeds, and no, that's it. that's it. And then you do different combinations of these to basically control a very old fashioned form of uh, program. Like you push numbers onto stacks and heaps, and you do very <clears throat> basic addition, subtraction, and so on. 
Um, but the really, really cool thing with white space is that you can, every actual piece of text that you write in there is just, it's just ignored. That is so um, cool. So, yeah. So the thing is that you essentially have comments, but this can be used in reverse. So um, imagine having a document with some text that talks about, I don't know, something random, like how to make a cake. And inside the document, based on the number of uh, line feeds and spaces and tabs, you actually have an embedded white space program. <laughs> so all you got to do is execute the white, white space code. And your cake recipe is a potential, you know, virus or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> nice. So th yeah, so this is something that I wanted to play around when I was younger, but I never really got to um, installing a, what is it an interpreter or a compiler or whatever for this language i don't remember even if there's anything you um, want to test out we need to create a youtube series out of it you come to max's place once a month or something and and then we, we just do stupid, stupid shit languaging could be brain fuck and we try to make it work you know okay i think that's a really good series. okay but you know we need Okay, but you know we and for anyone else who wants to try stuff like this, I strongly uh, suggest using a virtual machine so you don't do this stuff on your own computer. So you do this in a closed off container, you know, a virtual machine just so you're protected. Do you have a virtual stuff. machine? No, but I think you can get one very easily. I think what's it called? VM box okay. is free. So what, whatever you get will be fine. We will use your computer. <laughs> <laughs> Or you could you could you could always get a uh, something to fuck around on like a Raspberry Pi and then just wipe it after something goes wrong, you know? Because well, <laughs> a Raspberry Pi is like what ten dollars or something? I don't know, something stupid. Yeah, that that's pretty nice. I might invest in one. I am still looking for the features that I wanted. I'm to still. I was about. waiting. I thought you just forgot about it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't forget. No, the thing is, I am. If I remember a little more closely, I think it had to do with interfaces, but I can't remember for the life of me what exactly the interfaces, like what the changes were. Oh, 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 oh wait. No. <laughs> I thought I actually thought I found it legitimately as I spoke. This is me. awful. No. This is actually terrible. I feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> actually terrible. we are actually we might actually have to wait for the next podcast to hear the answer Oof, that's, that's gonna be a, that's a no, whole I'll month find, I'll find that it could be even two months before the next podcast i will find it and you will just <laughs> man i, I have to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh luckily you know if, even if i exit the chat you can be here <laughs> And mm. you can still talk to Craig. That's right. <laughs> I can talk to Craig. Craig and I are gonna. Craig and I are gonna do this. Craig, on our own. Craig really Craig wants Craig. to leave. Man, how lucky is it that they have this random Discord recording bot named Craig? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, I think I found it. We are. Craig we're gonna make a counter minute. on how many times you think you found it. Uh, no, no, I'm actually on a Microsoft website now. I Googled specifically the things to do with interfaces, and I was like, okay, give me this. I, I need to see this. Um, I think it was this. I think it was updating interfaces with default methods. Just Kotlin, Kotlin already I mean, has that. Default methods yeah. and interfaces. I think it was this, but this is, I have to say, this is in C sharp 8.0. So that's actually already out. Um, I haven't used this. I have not used this. But that's really cool. Um, yeah, from what I'm hearing, C sharp is catching up with everything it needs to. So there's no reason to change it. <laughs> I know you took that as a personal attack when I used catching up with. No, <laughs> it's, already, it's already pretty high up there. <laughs> No, I, I really don't care. I think it was this, though. I think I talked about this with my friend. But Jesus, it's it's not really ringing my bells the way I would have liked it to. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. when you know when you forget about something and then you find it, and then it's like, ah, yes, yes, it was this. 
you just make me think of those times I searched for a song I thought was and it kept on sounding great in my head. And then when oh, you actually find yeah. a song, you are disappointed beyond comprehension. That's true. That's true. I actually, I know exactly I know. what you mean. It's I a very good that. analogy. Are you still searching? Uh, yeah, I just, I was looking at these uh, default <laughs> methods. I'm going to call this podcast right. Even no, Searches. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not searching anymore. Uh, so yeah, what's uh, what questions do you have? Well, I just asked you about twenty questions. <laughs> no, you did not. <laughs> okay, it was seven, probably I'm around seven. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm certain if I go through this podcast, there will be about twenty questions. Are there any projects you're working on at the moment? Uh, like on my own, you mean? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of like a, a completely <laughs> generic question. Like, are you working on a project right now? Yes, yes I am. No, okay. Like, Wait a moment. Questions? You cannot say yes or no. These are not open. These are open-ended questions. <laughs> Can you specify your question, please? Is there any <laughs> Sorry. Is there anything? <laughs> yeah, I, can go for it. I, I just go rephrased for it. the question, but it was exactly the same. So... Are there yeah. any projects you're working on that you find interesting and that you're actually developing some skills in, in creating the project? Oh, yeah. Like, especially for work. Like, I started a new job recently. Is this the so one at Danske Bank? I... <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, also, yeah. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> this guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, every time you start a new thing, you know, there's a lot to learn, so. And what kind of coding are you actually doing at the moment? Uh, so at the moment for, well, it's two different things, well, okay. two different jobs for the time being, but it's, it's one of them is uh, just uh, mostly managing a database and working in Microsoft okay. Access. So there's a lot of Visual Basic code, um, which is quite cool, by the way, Visual Basic. I, I've never... Or specifically Visual Basic for applications in Microsoft. So you've got these Office applications that will all run Visual Basic code yeah. for you. And I think it's wonderful. It's a wonderful language. I have not uh, touched it. I have worked with Basic years ago. This is something that my dad introduced me to. But I have not worked with Visual Basic. And it's really cool. And it's neat. How and I'm also very curious. What does a normal day at the workplace consist of? I mean, what are you doing? What tasks do they give you? Because... The database, the code is written so, already, but you still have to maintain it in some way, right? No, so so the thing is that I'm I'm developing the database. Okay. Um, so all the things that have to be stored, I basically have to make, you know, the constraints between them. I have to make the tables. I have to make all the uh -huh. forms for yeah. people to use. Um, yeah. And in my other workplace, I haven't really started on... Uh, tasks yeah. yet you just saw the code so far uh, hmm. yeah so yeah but uh for for yeah so for the databases at least it's it's basically just work that's kind of organizing the, the data and the application that will i guess manage the data even are you still there <laughs> i am I'm right here. oh you went so silent i thought wow i thought i lost you you got any you got any more questions there <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> 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 I mean, code-related questions or something you want to talk about because it's a podcast. <laughs> Man, we've already been going for about an hour. There's only one more thing we can yeah. talk about so yeah. far. You're going to so end Because, I mean, we need to cut it down because, like, more than yeah. an hour is unmanageable. You're going to have to edit it if it's more than an hour. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get me to edit. <laughs> uh, why didn't you do more accents earlier? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it is what it is, right? All right. So, like the final question, it's going to be regarding. Code. Oh, the final <laughs> question. Yeah, it's nothing interesting. Are we ending so? Soon? Man, it's been a whole hour. <laughs> Why are we ending? <laughs> Although so the quick? podcast will probably be like ten minutes because fifty ah. minutes is even searching <laughs> for his interface yeah. default implementations. True. <laughs> it's so anticlimactic too. Like I, I, I looked it up and then I was like, I even uh, said I'm gonna be disappointed. I, you know, there's a chance that I still didn't really find what I wanted to because it's really not that exciting. The thing that I did. But please search about. for it, and in the next podcast, we yeah. will write it down. Yeah. So 
I will write to you. I promise I will write to you the moment I find it because it'll be like, wow. <laughs> please, I know please it's record cool. your reaction when you find it. Sure. Okay. So final question. I'll try and write. I will. I will put it in writing. Great. I love. I love <laughs> writing. So final question is regarding Code Palace. How do you like it? How do you dislike it? What would you like to see in the future? Um. How do I like it? How do I dislike it? And what would I like to see yes. in the future? Let's start with the last question because that's the first one I have an answer for. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> in the future, I would like to see something that would that I would find interesting to follow, like follow through from the Thanks, beginning man. to the end. <laughs> Is yeah, like something yeah, that yeah. I find interesting would be to for you to write down an idea for a project okay. make a series out of the project and then make you know every video is you developing a component of the project okay. and then at the end of like 20 or 30 or 40 videos whatever of at, at the end of the series you have some working application that is you know that took tens of videos to uh to code yeah right so you know not just something like i no, no no this isn't criticism to what you do now this is just a suggestion to where i see i'm it not more, taking i'm not taking right? it as criticism no 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 this this is more like what i would like to see <laughs> no, that's exactly what i asked right? you <laughs> yeah 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 just just to be clear cause i don't want to i want to compare it to what it is now but i don't want to say that it's a negative oh, thank you right? i appreciate it uh yeah so like now you're doing short videos there's maybe like three part uh, you see, they're building up. It used to be only one part. Yeah, <laughs> it used to be one part. <laughs> but I, I see the, I see the little, I see the cheeky little three part <laughs> every now and then. No, but that's that's cool. That's good. It's a um, yeah, and you know, it also there's a little bit of strategy to it, and kind of ensures people will come back because there's value in watching the next one if you're interested enough in seeing the first, it's just you need right? to know that the effort so, in making one of these series is just immeasurable sometimes if you make anything that's wrong yes. and you're on episode 10 and you need to change all yes. the code that is an annoying video actually it's a part of development that that's how it goes that's true um someone said i read somewhere that like 90% of software development is debugging. Yep. And I don't know if I agree with that, but I know that a lot of it is. <laughs> a lot of it is not going to be you sitting there writing amazing code that's going to make you shout Eureka every time you write something new. No, because you will be hunting for bugs. You will be frustrated <laughs> at the garbage that you wrote <laughs> some months ago. You know, like it's going to be that. Um, but that's why we try to make it as good as possible with the principles that we have, you know, the, the methodologies that we yeah. use. Anyway, um, the first two questions, that, that kind of answers the future That's question. Cool. The, the first <laughs> two questions, can you repeat? Oh, wow. They were very simple. It's what do you like about it? Yeah. And what do you dislike yeah, about yeah. it? Although I'm not, I don't want to yeah. hear about that. <laughs> what do I like? Let's start with that. Uh, I like that they're very straight to the point. If you want to see a video about XYZ in Kotlin, there's a video on XYZ in cool. Kotlin. Okay. So you go in your channel, you can literally search that up. And it's usually it's going to be, you know, a five, six, seven minute video, whatever. And you're going to find it. Okay. Perfect. And that's what I want. Like if you, if you, if you're looking for successful <laughs> hits, and if you want people finding things that they want very quickly, very efficiently, rather, that's what it's great for. Um, the things I don't like. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's really it's a long not... list. Okay, but just one. No, <laughs> no, it's not a long list. I I don't think there's anything that that I would use the word dislike. Oh, on. I think that you are. I think you're on a good path. Um, I think you just, yeah, you need to just focus on, on, um, how you want to teach because you do teach and sometimes teaching can be hard because not because you don't know the contents, but because 
it can be very hard to present for the people that it don't. is so hard. So there's a very it's very difficult in explaining, you know, on another level, on a on a on a level that does not understand what's going on. You need to you know abstract things from some other things. So you you know if you want to explain some concepts, you can't just explain it by explaining the concepts. The only thing you can explain by explaining the concept is recursion. <laughs> I love that. I love recursion. Right? Right. Every time, yeah. Talk, so I, you 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 know recursion if you know recursion. So that's, that's I say it. recursion. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So if, if you know, as long as you folks like, I'm nitpicking here because there really isn't bad stuff. That like I I think I write to you like the smallest things if I. Find but even let's be let's be honest. Like, I, I think, every every I think, single time you look yeah. in a mirror, you think recursion. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Um, but. The, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. I think I wrote. I think the last thing I wrote to you about was like you maybe mentioned some concept in one video that you actually talked about yeah, in another true. video. Yeah. But like that, that goes hand in hand with what I said. Like it's very hard to prepare. Like it makes perfect sense to me because you know, someone that used these things right like it doesn't bother me to hear this term because that term actually go for example it was to, to be specific it was to do with classes and right. constructors but the thing is the video was only about classes that, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. just to get people on board. so the point was the point was that you mentioned constructors and actually you could have just made an example without using constructors because later on in the video you said we'll touch upon constructors in the next one <laughs> like it makes sense to me because every time, almost every time I'd write a class, I would use a constructor. That's how, you know, bound together they are in, in everyday code. But that's the very hard thing you have to look out for, right? You can't combine these things, especially if you're going to split them up in, so into different Maybe videos. I'm wrong, but my idea was to introduce them to constructor without mentioning it. So they would see how the constructor was, and in the next video, solidify their understanding was that you think that's a bit like it's too abstract for them still right uh yeah so the, the the problem that i have with that is that you introduce a concept uh in the class video that they have to use to get the example to mm -hmm. work but the concept you don't talk about um while you could have made an example that didn't use the constructor and then in the constructor video you could have gone back to the old example and just modified it to use a constructor okay so in your car it was a car class where you made you, you in the constructor i'm just pulling out of my memory here i think you pass the model the, the make yeah. of the car right. so you say bmw yeah, or whatever exactly. but you could have just used a variable that everyone is already familiar with because you worked on variables in one of the first right. videos so you could have just made a variable in the class and you could have modified the variable to say whatever but the thing is, then in the constructor video, you could come back and say, now, instead of modifying the variable, we can change the name of the car every time we make a new car object. Even you genius. And how you do genius, do that? I'm going to write this down. <laughs> and, you know, how do we do that? We Even use constructor, blah, blah, blah. We can use the blah, blah, blah. A genius. Sure, sure. No, that is a very fair point. It, that is like we we like that is so much nitpicking. <laughs> that, that, that was a perfect example, you know. Because when I create the Python course, the thing with the Kotlin course yeah. is I want to know how I'm teaching this. So when I start teaching Python, I will teach it much better. Yeah, so it's like it's, a, it's kind it's of a test series, like let's say. Sure, it's always like a build upon kind of. But that I really like that concept, and it's obvious. I mean, if studying it that we should be teaching it this way but when you start teaching it you just forget everything oh yeah yeah that's that's exactly like the thing we mentioned it's incredibly hard to keep that in mind because it makes so much sense to talk about constructors with exactly classes. like they are <laughs> i don't know two balls in a nut sack you know what I mean? <laughs> like, great they just go hand in hand they really do <laughs> oh man yeah. all right but anyways, I think that's all the questions. We actually yeah. got through a lot. This is going to be the longest part 
up to date on Code Palace. Well, it depends how far you edit down, right? Well, let's hope I edit more than last time. No, let's <laughs> let's hope I let's hope <laughs> I edit less than last time. Ah, uh, yeah. What was the last one? How long? It was went it? up to fifty-six minutes, but I think we recorded for one hour and ten. Okay. Yeah. And this is, can we see, can you see the uh, duration? I, I can see it as soon as I download it, which I will do now. Okay. But we need okay. to have an outro before I download it. Fair so, enough. anyways, that was even Spige. <laughs> that was a shitty outro. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was, I was hyped for this and I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We need to have an outro anyway. <laughs> Here's Wonderwall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll end it there. Yeah. Cue music. Please don't cue Wonderwall. <laughs> I think that's a perfect outro. Okay, I'm going to go see if I can okay. get the recording. <laughs> I All hope right. it's recording. <laughs> uh, you want to stop the Craig? Well, I want to download it before I stop it because I'm scared <laughs> that if we stop oh. it, it just will delete it. Uh, according to the Craig site, yeah, fuck <laughs> <up>. <laughs> I mean, I got the, I got the documentation. <laughs> Listen here, I'm listening to the documentation. Craig join, Craig leave, Craig stop, and then when you begin recording, you'll see re you'll receive giving you links to download or delete. No, you get links to delete them. So it's like an API. You'll just you will be the state machine. You will use the links for. So can I say things. Craig stop? Yeah, you can say Craig. Craig, stop. stop. <laughs>